Welcome to the Grow Your Business and Grow Your Wealth podcast with Gary Helt. Gary is an expert in helping business owners put together a plan that will provide a better future for their businesses, themselves, and their families. On the podcast, Gary interviews other professionals who share his vision, and together they share secrets and strategies any business owner can use to build a better financial foundation for your business and your life. Welcome back to the podcast. This week, our guest is Tyson Koska, and he is the founder of Orange Trajectory. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Gary. So Tyson, okay, so you didn't start out and just, hey, I own this company, I founded and did all this stuff. Tell us kind of your your background and how you got to where you are now. Sure. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to start, but I the, the real formation of On Trajectory started just out of sheer frustration. I had for years um, was looking for a tool that could help me project, you know, way into the future. So I'm, you know, I'm on this path and let's say I, let's say I, I get to a point where I can save an additional 500 bucks per month, but I can't start that saving in, until next year sometime. Or I want to change my 401k contributions. What does that really do to my financial life over time? And really what I really wanted to know, so I was a software engineer for 25 years. I really wanted to know when can I just stop being a software engineer? When can I start being a, uh, uh, work part-time in a bookshop and uh, spend more time at home with my kids? I wanted to know when I could just kind of reach that point of financial independence or financial freedom. And I had looked at a lot of tools for budgeting and for keeping on track. And I've also also looked at a lot of retirement calculators and planners, but there was nothing that was, that really gave me that kind of flexibility that I just described to you. And one day I was living in downtown Baltimore, little Italy, if anyone's familiar with our city. And um, we had, I lived in a row home with one car. My wife and I would, we had a little girl would push the stroller to go shopping uh, and pick up what we need. And I was up in my bedroom one day and my wife comes in and goes, honey, I've got the best news. I'm pregnant. We're gonna have another baby. And I said, oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that means I need another college savings plan. That means I need, uh, we're going to need a bigger house. And if we're going to get a bit bigger house, let's move out to the burbs. If we move out to the burbs, we're going to need a second car. And I'm like, all these numbers just were flying around in my head because I had sort of, I, I had, you know, as a software engineer, I was very comfortable in spreadsheets and I sort of, sort of made some financial assumptions about my future. And I thought I knew where I was going. And all of a sudden I had no idea where I was going and I didn't know what to tweak. I didn't know what to change. And as I said, I, I was always thinking someone is going to make this software and no one ever did. So I, at that moment, I said, okay, I'm going to build it. And uh, I went to some friends with my idea. They tried to convince me not to build it because they said, oh, this has to exist somewhere out there. You know, put in your income, put in your expenses, put in your contributions and uh, be able to make changes about your assumptions over time. I said, it would be great if you could find it for me because then I won't have to build it. And uh, they did their market research and no one found anything. So we started on trajectory back in 2014. Wow. So what, what did you do before uh, you were a software engineer? Uh, yeah, before I was a software engineer, I, it's kind of a, an odd story. I, so I grew up uh, in a small town out in uh, Northern Maryland and wanted, uh, sort of had in my mind, I wanted to, you know, go away to college and be in the dorm room and, you know, just the thing you saw in, in movies in the, in the, in the eighties. And, uh, what turns out, you know, my dad was a, a police officer. My mom was a waitress and they couldn't sort of send me out of state to some school somewhere and I could live on campus. And it got to the point for graduation. And, and I had, um, I had actually applied for a couple of scholarships that I didn't get and, uh, ended up joining the army. Uh, went from high school to flight school. And it was a really neat program where I was able to, um, within a year, I went to basic training, then I went to warrant officer candidate school, then I became a helicopter pilot. I spent a year in Korea. I spent two years in Germany. I spent a year in Iraq and Saudi Arabia during Desert Shield, Desert, Desert Storm. Um, and then I got out of the military at age 22. And then I went to college. And so um, when I finished college and, and I made a note, some other interesting choices there, I, I have degrees in English and philosophy, which uh, they weren't pounding down my 
door for uh, <laughs> for philosophy advice after I graduated. So I was luckily able to. Um, I had I had learned how to program when I was younger, and I always had a very a high interest in computers and personal computers, and and so I sort of parlayed my my past experience with computers, my English and philosophy lent well to a sort of teaching situation, and I became a software teacher for a few years, and then eventually programmer and architect and project manager and everything in in IT that you can imagine. Right. So you know, going into uh, you know starting starting your business here, you said that you had friends that that went out and kind of helped you scrub, trying to find uh, what you're looking for. And I totally understand your frustrations because I've I've had them also. Um, how did you? How did I mean? Because this is a, a big undertaking to develop the software and then create you know have your business created, so forth and so on. How you know? Because that's such a big step. I mean, what made you really feel that okay, I got to do this and, and move forward? Well, I, I will have to say that the 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 tool has matured to a point that has wildly exceeded my imagination. I had really seen this as a very simply consumer facing. Um, initially, I had thought we would do things like, you know, I have a brokerage account which taxes on gains. I have a retirement account that's tax deferred and maybe I have a bank account, right? So it's kind of not super simple, but simple enough. Um, and I thought, you know, from an income perspective, I have income and then I would just tax the income. And then from an expense perspective, uh, it was one of the really key development um, or philosophical notions is that, you know, expenses change. I don't have a mortgage forever. I don't have daycare, thank God, forever. Uh, it, expenses begin and end. Um, and so any of the tools that says, oh, what's your expenses or you know, whatever, what's your income? And then they make an assumption that, okay, you, because your expenses are this, you need to cover this for the rest of your life or your income is this, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna make this for the rest of your life. These are just bad assumptions. So my idea was just something that lets me take my income and expenses and change different expectations during different periods of my life, set up my accounts that I have and put con change my, again, have the ability to change my assumptions about contributions during different periods of my life. And that was it. I thought that if I can get this, then I can do, I can do 30, 40 year projections uh, and it'll be enough for any consumer. And two, two things, two unexpected things happened. One is I thought just having that would be a really popular thing in the kind of you know personal finance space that people would be like, oh, this is awesome. And they would all start using it. And instead of spreadsheets, people would start using this software. Well, that didn't happen. The other thing that didn't happen was I thought people would be, the people that did use it, because I mean, there, there are, I mean, right. lots of people that do use it. Um, I thought that those people would be completely happy and satisfied with what they have but that wasn't true either. So I had two things going on. One was a constant push for building more and more features and functions and potential complexities and different ways to handle taxes and Roth conversions and Monte Carlo simulations and all this kind of stuff that if you're into personal finance will ring bells for you. Right. Uh, and so there's a community's pushing for all of that. But then the other part of the, of the community is saying, well, oh, this is way too complicated for me. So I've got competing messages coming in. It, this is way to what I gave, what I initially did was way too complicated, but it also wasn't complicated enough. And, and over the past seven years or how long it's been, um, we, we've tried to solve both problems, continually, continually making it easier and easier for people with, that are not super financially literate to have something that can benefit them and help them and teach them and bring them along on a journey of becoming better with money. And also helping the community that understands what a Monte Carlo simulation is and give them different ways to shape and play with the future assumptions and future tax. You know, what, what if the taxes go up in the few years? How do I, how do I stress test my portfolio? So they're both there. They both live under the same uh, uh, product now. So in, you know, you said that you, you've developed this over time and I'm assuming it's, it's feedback from your friends that are using this, but also the other consumers that are using this. Sure. Yeah. We have a community of about 10,000 people. Okay. That's pretty darn nice. What, um, 
what are some of the other things that you that you've added to it? I mean, you know, have you mm -hmm. added, you know, you, you've talked about, you know, with the kids and daycare and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Have you added in, you know, like 529 plans and budgeting and things like that? We have added in all of that. And again, it didn't come out. It didn't start out that way. Uh, but speaking of budgeting, you can set up a little budget for like it doesn't have to be forever. Right? It doesn't have to be a forever budget. Say, well, here's my budget now. In five years, I'm going to have my credit cards paid off. So I'm going to, you know, this this will be my budget. And you can you can do that different um, different periods of your life. And then let's say you're not in a perfect financial situation. Let's say you've got a couple of credit cards that are maxed out or some student loans you're trying to, to get paid off. Um, if you're If you're familiar with that industry, the budgeting industry, they have things called like, um, uh, avalanche method of, of uh, debt reduction or snowball method of debt reduction. So you can test some of those things and see how much you'll save over time if you did reduce your debt now. And the software will figure out how much how much cash flow can I, you know, extra extra cash flow. You got to have some, some cash flow uh, to apply to the debt, but it will show you some nice numbers about uh, how getting rid of that debt can affect you. So those are some things we've done kind of for people in, in that life situation. But then, you, you know, you, you said something about, um, actually, I think you said Roth conversions. I'm not sure. Maybe you said something else. Right, uh, right. But, but, but these, these higher end um, sort of complexities where, um, you know, I, I have an old 401k that I converted into a traditional IRA. And I, I want to test doing um, a four-year Roth ladder because I'm going to take off work for, uh, for a couple of years. And, and during that period, I will have lower income. And so, yeah, you can do all of that. Now, obviously, some of that's a little bit more complex to, sure. to put into the tool, but, but it's there. Uh, we've even... And again, something I never intended to happen. Uh, we've we've gotten requests from the professional advisor community. So we we actually have a, a, a version of on trajectory that's for professional advisors or even money coaches or or that sort of thing, where um, any anyone that's their client gets on trajectory for free, and then you can collaborate together uh, in the tool, and so that. Um, you know, potentially, potentially you can have, can set up a scenario for the, for the client to play with and actually put in different assumptions and the, and the advisor can have their own and you guys can collaborate together in real time remotely. You can see each other's updates. I mean, it's pretty neat from a collaboration standpoint, what we've done. That's, that's, I, I, I like that piece because many times, um, you know, as a as an advisor, not a financial advisor, but as an advisor, lots of times there's information that, that we need. Um, uh, you know, and, and when someone new in business, you know, I try to talk to them and find out. It's like, okay, how much money do you need to take home from your business? And lots of times they can't tell me. Um, <laughs> and it's just like, okay, well, here, can you go home and put together a budget type thing? And and if they had something like this, A, they would probably already have the budget set up, but B, they would be able to easily look and say, okay, this is how much on average I need to bring home to be able to, to pay for everything. Um, but then that also helps me in the tax planning side of looking at, hey, what are the expenses that, that you are paying and what can we do to help reduce some of those? Right. Because you might just having that list in front of you is going to trigger ideas that exactly. they never would have thought of. Yeah. Right. That's a good point. What, um, from an education standpoint, what, what, you know, yes, using the software is going to teach me some things, but I mean, do you guys have, what kind of support and things like that do you have from an education and, and user, uh, standpoint? So we do have a lot We have very, um, comprehensive written guides, but expecting someone to come in and right. read 50 pages of how to do personal financial modeling, it's not always attractive. So we also have uh, videos to help folks. Uh, mm -hmm. We also run a, a monthly workshop where anyone can join. I usually start the call. The, it's a webinar kind of format. I started off with, hey, did you know and on trajectory you can do this, this, or this? Spend 10, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes doing that. And then we literally just open up the floor to everyone and people hold up their hand and they ask a question. And then I show how to, I show in real time, how to model that visually uh, in front of the whole community. And then what we do is we save those videos. We chop them up into little pieces and we put them in a library. So you can come back later and say, Oh, I had that same question. And then you can watch the video response from the, from the webinar. Oh, that's awesome. 
um, the, the, the video clips that you have and stuff like that, approximately how long are they? It depends on the question. They can be anywhere from 30 seconds to, you know, a few minutes. Okay. So that's great because I mean, you know, uh, lots of times our attention span is about that long. So <laughs> that, that, that's perfect. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. Cause initially the idea was, oh, we'll, uh, we'll put like a table of contents together and say, all these questions are answered in this webinar. No one wants to sit through 45 minutes of right. a webinar for it. So we, we, and plus it gives us an opportunity to chop out some of the, maybe, maybe I don't, I'm not being right. as direct as I should. So right. chop it up and make it. To totally understand. Right size. Yeah. In going through and doing all of this, I mean, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced in, in going through your this process that you have? I'm sure folks that listen to this podcast, knowing the kind of podcast that it is, I'm sure that folks have heard that um, the, the strategy of if I build it, they will come is not the way to build a business. <laughs> I, can, I can confirm that that's true. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that was probably my biggest mistake is that I'm a software engineer and I'm a software engineer that happened to get interested in personal finance. And I like making software that is helpful and it truly can change, you know, someone's personal financial life. That's what I get joy from. I don't necessarily love doing podcasts. <laughs> right. or I don't necessarily love writing articles or writing ad copy or mm -hmm. going out and, and contacting bloggers and saying, Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, I, it's just not part of, it's not part of what I enjoy. And I decided that if I can't do what I enjoy, you know, it, 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 it it's not worth it for me. So I, I probably made a big mistake of just continuing to heads down, work on the product, listening to the community and doing what, what was fun for me. And I, and probably, um, it was four or five years I was doing this while having a day job. So my partners and I, we would uh, every weekend, you know, we would be staying up late, talking on on the phone, and uh, coming up with what we what we wanted to do with the tool. We would they, so one partner's up in New Jersey, one person's up in um, New York, and we would sometimes just meet in New Jersey and code literally. Mm -hmm all weekend. I mean, we wouldn't shower or anything. We would just be <laughs> at, at our keyboards programming, but it was a lot of fun. It was, it was great fun. And, you know, we always talked about, well, we need to do some marketing. We need to do some, yeah, well, let's, you know, maybe this next feature will just catch on fire. Now I'm also lucky enough that um, I didn't completely fail. <laughs> so right. um, even though I did, I did focus on, on the marketing, uh, did not focus on the marketing at some point, Luckily, um, someone reached out and said, hey, we've been watching your product grow over time. We think it's really special. We want to become, become part of it. So with, uh, with the help of uh, some investors, I was able to finally really leave my day job and focus on trajectory full time and pay myself a living wage. And it's been, it's been a blast. I'm just having a great time. Right. What are you, what are you looking forward to the most with this? I, to really get to the point that I always intended to get to. And that is to have a platform that is intimidation free, that's actually enticing and fun to use for people that are not necessarily financially savvy, that want to get their life down. So I, I have a, a philosophy that there's three things that On Trajectory does for you. One is it actually helps you, really does help you make a good financial plan. Because there's a lot of software out there that, yeah, maybe you can, but it, it's not that easy. Or maybe the software exists because they want to scare you. So you pick up the phone and call Fidelity or call Vanguard. There's a lot of that software. I actually want software that helps people and makes it okay, at least not super painful, to make a plan. Because once you have a good financial plan that is, you know, you can see into the future, then the next step is track your progress. Jump in once a quarter. Are the assumptions that I made, are they remotely accurate? Because if, if, if you're using a tool that's just a point in time, then you have no idea, hey, from six months ago to now, did I, did I do what I said? I, was, I, I can't remember. So right. with, with our tool, it's, it's really all about you know, checking in, not, not all the time, like once a quarter kind of thing, and making sure, 
you're on progress. If you do those two things, make a plan, track your progress, I honestly believe that you will reach a kind of peace of mind financially so that you can stop saying, oh, can I get the latte or can I not get the latte? Can I send, can I get braces for my child or can I not get braces for my like Financial stress is huge in people's lives. But mm -hmm. once you make a plan, once you track your progress, you're like, oh, I know, I know exactly what I can afford. And so that brings a sense of peace. And that's, that's ultimately, that's what I want to be able to do is bring that peace of mind to folks. Yeah, I, I think so many times people just, just look, okay, I need to make more, I need to make more, I need to make more. And you're right. I mean, you know, the, the, we've always been told is you can't improve upon something if it's not in writing. <laughs> That's and right. I think creating that plan puts it in writing, you know, granted it's in the computer, but, but it's there and you're able to see. And I think lots of times people, you know, again, like you're talking about the stress and things like that, you know, when can I retire? Um, how much do I need to, you know, if I'm putting whatever, 500 bucks a month away, you know, into my kids 529 plan, you know, where, where is it going to be by the time they go to college, you know, type thing? Um, is that going to even come close to paying for college? Um, I just, I think that there's so many things that, that we struggle with in our lives that having a planning tool, and I'm all about planning, Having this planning tool, you know, can t definitely help, um, I'm going to say, ease some of the pain, but also, you know, it, it, if it grows with you as things happen, then at that point, it's easy to look at and say, okay, I mean, you know, we're, we're going through, you know, a pandemic and all of these things happen and, and Russia going into Ukraine and everything else. How does that affect me personally? And a lot of people can't say how this is affecting them personally, besides the emotional feeling. Yep. I have no idea. And, and, that, and that is really, that's a really special part of what we do is having that, it's almost like a touchstone of confidence. Uh, and, and the other thing is, um, well, I always tell people, so we make it really easy to get in. You, how much, how old are you? No, what year were you born? How much have you saved so far in your life? How much you save on a monthly basis and what's your annual income? Four questions, super easy. But that's the beginning. That's not the end, right? And the, the, so the, the beginning is now actually creating a, a plan, but then letting the plan grow with you as you as your personal, as the complexity in your personal financial life grows, then the tool grows. And that's another key design point is in a lot of these tools, it's like, you know, in TurboTax, when you've got to answer yeah. I mean, I know you're a CPA, so, uh, but the, 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 num the sheer number of questions are crazy, right? And, right. and it gets scarier and scarier. It's like, am I even answering this correctly? Yeah. There's a lot of financial planning tools that do the same thing. And you get to the point where you're thinking, look, I don't even know what the question is asking me. Right. So no matter what answer I give, I have no way to judge, had be confident that the result I'm going to see is accurate because, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Right. And, and so if you don't understand the question, so that's another thing that we do is we, you only, if you don't have a child, you would never answer a question about a college savings, right. savings plan. So you don't have to occupy any brain space at all with that. If you don't have a retirement plan, I mean, you should, but if, if you don't, right. you don't have to work, you don't have to answer any questions about employer matching or whatever. It's again, brain cells that you don't have to use uh, to get to, to go through the process. But then the, Great thing is when you do get a job or you do finally participate in the 401k at your job, which everyone, of course, should do. Once you do that, you make that decision. You go into on trajectory, say, OK, I just started. I just opened a 401k. I put five hundred dollars in. Here are my contributions. Here's my employer match. And from that point, then we start tracking that along with everything else. So it, it is you, you said it beautifully. That it grows with you. That's pretty awesome. So. You know, obviously you would like everybody to use this, but kind of what <laughs> at, at, you know, at what age are you recommending people to start using this? Age is tricky uh, because, I mean, you can get some pretty young professionals mm -hmm. that would really benefit from something like this. I think it's less about age. And I did mention previously that, you know, we do have tools and, and this is particularly helpful for like money coaches and folks like that. We do have tools for people that are in debt and struggling and trying to get their head above water. But to be honest with you, 
uh, from a consumer perspective, on trajectory is really the most helpful for someone that does have a little bit of, you know, they've got a 401k, maybe they have a young child and they want to set up a college savings plan. Oh, you, and you used the example earlier, like, because they want to see how much will accrue by the time the child is ready to go to, to college. So someone that's got a little bit of complexity in their life, life and is interested, those are the, the, the great candidates uh, for our tool. Someone that you know, is absolutely struggling and, and doesn't understand anything about money, they need more of a professional than they need a do-it-yourself do uh, tool like ours. Right. Uh, but uh, that's what I would say. Gotcha. you. Um, you know, obviously you've had a long journey now with, with all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you wish you knew then that you know now? I guess I need, I wish I had had either a sense of patience. Um, again, if you build it, they will come. If that's your strategy, you're going to have to be really patient and, or you're going to have to have something that's just absolutely revolutionary in the marketplace because otherwise they're not going to come because they're, you know, you got to differentiate yourself. So I wish I had understood that. I mean, I had heard it and I understood it on some level, but it's really true. Um, so I guess if I, I would, reset my expectations a little bit. I, I didn't expect that, you know, seven years, that it would take me six years to attract an investor to let me, you know, really full-time quit my day job and, and work on, on the software full-time. Um, yeah. So that's probably that. Gotcha. All right. I've asked a bunch of questions. Uh, <laughs> what have I not asked you? Oh, you you asked me. So, I, you know, having listened to your podcast before, I knew you were going to ask me, what didn't you ask me? <laughs> Damn it, Gary, <laughs> it to be everything. <laughs> maybe, maybe about what the future plans for on trajectory. There you go. All right. So uh, what I can say is, and I think I made this statement earlier in the interview that it has far exceeded anything that I expected uh, on trajectory to become. We're now used by professional financial planners. We are used by HR departments to, as an employee benefit for their uh, employees. I never thought any of that stuff would happen. Mm -hmm. And now what we're doing is that's really the space that we're going to be moving into. So the consum consumers, don't worry. That is, that's where it started, that it will always be there for consumers, an easy to use tool that sort of democratizes the building of a financial plan. But, but where we're going to try to put some of our energy is to kind of bring everything together, the consumer, the advisor, the HR department, like create this common collaborative platform where no matter what your financial literacy is, it's got some value for you. And even if you're not financially literate, it still has value and a place where people can meet and learn, do things. I mean, you know, just like this kind of cool financial space where, where people can get together and, and have, a, have something that brings clarity and again, peace of mind to their financial life. Yeah. I, I, I think that, I think the, the workshops that you talk about, you know, are going to help you get, get there also. Um, just, I think, I think if people are able to come and listen and, and kind of learn um, like that, and then also the, the, your, your, your video library, just because it's like short snippets type thing, I think that that, that is going to help out tremendously with that. So if, if people like what they hear and they want to learn more about Orange Trajectory, how can they you know, reach out to you or, or learn more about it? Sure. Just go to ontrajectory.com, spelled just like it sounds. Uh, we have a free 14-day trial. Uh, don't worry. You don't have to put your credit card in or anything. Like, we don't play those games. You just go in, try the software, see if you like it. If you like it, great. Uh, you would, you, you know, when you register with your email address, you'll get on our mailing list, which, of course, you can unsubscribe from. We hope you don't. And we send out weekly communications, tips and tricks, announcements of podcasts, for example, right. when, uh, when I might appear, workshop announcements, that sort of things. We also do things that are timely. So, hey, tax time is coming up. Did you know you could do this or that and on trajectory? Uh, we just did um, last couple communications. We did an article on volatility and we did one on inflation uh, recently. And we've got some really, really neat features, uh, especially around inflation, where you can stress test your portfolio for different inflation assumptions, uh, short term assumptions. Um, so, yeah, on trajectory.com, free trial. If you want me, I'm TY at on trajectory.com. Ty at on trajectory.com. I answer all my emails. 
to you know write me directly. If you want to write into our help desk, we do have um, everyone who's a member gets free email support. It's questions at ontrajectory.com. Ask whatever you want. We'll try to solve it for you. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Great. I really appreciate your time and uh, you know, good luck with uh, with this in the future. It sounds like it's certainly something everybody needs to get their hands on. I hope so. Thanks, Gary. Thanks. Our guest this week was Tite Sinkowska, who is the founder of Orange Trajectory. Thank you.